don't be a slave to ADP. If your first round pick is a total bust, you still have a good chance to win or Do not draft before you get our last minute fantasy baseball advice. What we're going to tell you today is going to help you dominate your fantasy draft. I'm Alan Sislowski here with RotoWire co-founder Peter Shanky. Peter, how much of 2020 should we take seriously? Uh, definitely a lot. I mean, it's the only chance we've had stats in the last year, you know, especially for minor leaguers or someone uh, smaller. But generally speaking, it's a two-month sample. Two months into this season, when someone's you know scuffling, not doing that well, we're going to say, hold on, you know, it's a long season, right? So you got to keep that in mind. So you know, established players, Alex Bregman, Patrick Corbin, those are some guys I'm looking at. They didn't do well last year, but they've got a really good track record. And I think that if it would have been a full season, you know, you wouldn't have been that worried after two months. What is the best way to start your fantasy draft? Is it go after the hitters or go for pitching? The number one thing about fantasy sports and especially fantasy baseball is you just got to know all the rules and, and, you know, in your league. Categories, extra players, slots for IR players that you can stash them. Uh, it makes a huge difference all the way from the top to the bottom as far as your strategy goes. To go to Rotowire, use our custom projections you know, or uh, dollar value pages, put in all of your parameters, all of your league settings. You may not agree with our ranking, but what's going to happen is some players are going to be higher or lower at, as a group than you think. So you might notice like, wow, there's all these middle relievers that are more valuable than I thought. Oh, that's right. You know, it values, there's an innings map, innings cap on my league, for example. So getting, you know, somebody who gets a lot of strikeouts per inning is very important. And so, you know, rules like that come to the surface when you do that. So, I, you know, I'd strongly advise that. That's one of the first things I do for anybody in fantasy sports, regardless of the sport, but especially baseball. How hard do we need to go after starting pitching? How many pitchers do you want to come out with in the first four rounds? The thing about starting pitching in fantasy baseball, it's just a high risk, high reward strategy. If you're in an overall championship, you're playing the NFBC National Fantasy Baseball Championship and you want to win number one, you know, you probably have to go for the big time starting pitchers. But if you're in a 10 team, you know, AL only league, you know, maybe not, right? Or if you're only, if you're really just, you know, being finishing third or fourth is fine with you, then there, you know, take less risk. Then you, you should go with a ton of hitters and, you know, not as many pitchers and pitchers are more volatile. So, you know, it really kind of depends on the league format and it depends on what your goal is. So what player in the top 15 ADP do you think has the most risk? Trevor Bauer, you know, I mean, he had a great track record last, last year. He's switching teams. Um, you know, he doesn't have that, you know, long a track record. Um, Major League Baseball is looking into spin rate. You know, maybe they're going to investigate. He jumped up a lot. All his pitches went up a lot. That's not to say that anything, he did anything illegally or wrong. But, you know, you just put all those factors together. And he's a great pitcher, a ton of upside. We saw what happened last year. But same time, he's going in the first round in a lot of drafts. And, you know, there's a lot of downside risk as well. What player going outside of the top 50 picks do you think is underpriced right now? Well, I think Leymar Torres of the Yankees is, you know, he's a stud, you know, shortstop, didn't have the best year last year. Um, you know, he's somebody you want to bank on. That lineup, they're going to score a ton of runs, and he's going to be in the middle of a lot of that action. So um, I think, you know, the Yankees lineup is generally, you know, take all those players. And if you want to take more risk, I mean, take some of the more injured players from last year, because if they stay healthy for the whole season, uh, you're going to have a big payday. How fantasy managers deal with closers and catchers could sometimes determine how their season fares. What is your plan of attack for those two positions? Closers are definitely waiting. There's going to be a lot of turnover, and we've already seen a lot of turnover already. At it. That's going to be the course of the whole year. I think there's going to be a lot of volatility. You're seeing a lot of teams with bullpens with multiple players getting it saves. So there's going to be a lot on the waiver wire. Catcher, I like to be a little bit more aggressive on. I think that. Um, you know, it's not clear they get that injured that much more. I do like a lot of the catchers late, in, you know, in the in player pool. Uh, Ryan Jeffers on the, on the Twins um, is, a, is a good pick. Um, you know, you can wait on catcher too. So I, I'm not opposed to, you know, being aggressive on catchers. Um, uh, but closers at most formats, I'm definitely going to wait because I just feel like there's going to be a lot of, lot of options available in free agency this year. What advice can you give fantasy baseball drafters when things don't go their way early in the draft? Stay with the plan. You know, I mean, get your guys, you know, especially in a draft. Um, don't be a slave to ADP. Remember, ADP is just the average. You know, if you're drafting strictly from ADP, that's just average. You know, you got to beat that average. You got you to gotta take some chances. You know, if the first part of the draft doesn't go, out, go that well, you know, there's definitely time to recover. Also in baseball in general, I mean, of all the sports, um, 
you know, it's a long season. And if you grind away all year and you're active on the free agent market and for trading and a league that takes trading, um, you know, you can improve from a, a not good draft uh, way more than you can most other sports. If your first round pick is a total bust uh, in fantasy baseball, you know, you still have a good chance to win or finish in the money. What is the biggest change in the fantasy game as you look back? The information, like back 30 years ago, I used to win leagues just because I was able to get to the newswire and see the news and pick up players before somebody else. Now the information is instantaneous um, and it's hard to sift through. It's like the opposite. There's so much information, it's hard to sift through. I mean, that's why the Rotowire player notes are great because you, know, you can spend hours on Twitter and what does it mean? What does that guy mean? Is that true? Is that real? But you know, if you just need to know, and you know, I need to know right now, I'm my lineup, I've got five minutes left. I mean, you can get the gist of everything right from the Rotowire player notes.